Yo, what's up? We are now in the Volkswagen ID3 first plus. This is the mid trim level. And now I've been testing all of them. The base first and the max. And this is the 58 or the 62 kilowatt hour version. And this video will be a, a little summary. Plus I will talk yeah, about the car and give you guys the driving impression of how it is because all the other tests is specific test about range, acceleration, noise, but this is more like a, like a summary. So one thing I want to point out with the ID3 is that it is very efficient. And I just didn't just get that high efficiency on one of the cars. No, all these three, the standard plus and max, they are all efficient also at high speed. So that is the, the greatest advantage with this car. It's the efficiency. Uh, let me see. Other things I want to highlight is that the driving comfort here is really good. You see now, we're driving on a construction area. There's some bumps. And fun fact is that the ID3 has longer wheelbase than Passat, which is you know considered a, a big family car. And also, did you know that the ID3 has longer wheelbase than Polestar 2 even? So that means that with a longer wheelbase, you have more, there was a bump there. Boof, so comfy. Like when I'm driving on the on the autobahn, well, okay, I mean, I mean on the motorway, highway, anyway really but also i mean especially on the motorway when i'm cruising fast at 120 130 kilometers per hour this car is so stable nice and stable and comfy and confident that's something you want to you once you drive it you will notice the same thing but also comfortable because you can say that well my model 3 if it makes sense to compare it to model 3 maybe a standard range plus uh the model 3 standard range plus very important to point out this is standard range plus the cheapest one yes some people be like wah, wah, but the tesla is too expensive wah, wah. no 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 standard range plus okay anyway the the, the model 3 is also uh, comfy on 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 highway because it also has long wheelbase but it doesn't have the the same uh, level of co uh, suspension comfort like this one has i don't know i, I don't know too much about the, the suspension but i just feel when i drive this car that the suspension is good uh and okay let's talk about tires then i found out that the 18 inch in my opinion is the best they they give the best sound level and also uh best comfort and consumption wise i found out that it doesn't matter really 18 19 and 20 they have more or less the same consumption so you don't have to worry about that but the the 20 inch is just in my opinion too hard you see this one actually the 19 inch offer also okay dampening remember that the tires is the first line of defense when you run into a bump the tire is the first first element that has to soak up the damage and then the suspension and the whatever other stuff uh bushings right they're called they soak up the rest and in the end the seat has to soak up the, the remaining and oh yeah okay i should also talk about the seat yes the seat in the standard one is just fabric seat it doesn't look fancy but they work great and i like this this middle armrest that can be adjusted and also the individual for the passenger side i like this is the small things that i like about this car and also the the cabin is open you have good headroom but also you have good headroom i mean you had good leg room and space to put your stuff here and it's not only about putting your your phone or your purse here but it's all about knee room also because yeah i'm not very long person but a long person would have you know, long knees and they will feel cramped in cars without this open openness here so i'm a big fan of it like you have in tesla in i3 uh, in uh, ionic they have more open space here that's nice okay hmm, i'm gonna return the car now so wait, let, me, let me just go over here let's take the bus lane yes the tesla lane and what else noise level uh this car has really good soundproofing against wind noise wind noise but when it comes to road noise um it could have been better but as long as you go for the 18 inch wheels then you have a really quiet ride now if you go for 20 inch especially in norway 
you have to expect some significant road noise. But the 20 inch with, uh, I mean, if we go from max, you get also the, the, um, the windscreen that has been sound insulated. Or actually some people claim it's heat insulated. <laughs> I actually don't know, but for some reason in my noise measurement, the max had slightly better noise than, uh, than plus, uh, despite 20 inch. So you can see, if you want to know more, you can see that video about that specific topic. And, uh, what's that? Okay, okay, I have to focus here. I'm gonna return the car now to Rian. Um, uh, okay, but when it comes to the bad things, the infotainment here is laggy, slow, buggy, not very logic. Like, if I'm here, in the, I see the trip meter because the instrument cluster is way too small. It doesn't show you nearly as much information you want to see. Uh, so, but you can see some of the information here, the trip meter, but if you want to reset the trip meter here, okay, I'm not gonna do it while I'm driving, but you have to go into some sub menus and dig into some places and it's not very intuitive. And someone had to, some, some of my followers had to tell me how to reset it. It's as complicated as an e-golf. So the infotainment system, could need an upgrade or an improvement rather um, and, but as for the interior okay this is the plus and the difference between plus and max and the base isn't really that great when it comes to interior it's still lots of hard plastic everywhere the seats are different in these three trim levels and i i find that even these plus seats are great now, they are manual the plus and the base model they have just manual seat whereas the max has nicer seats with uh, electric adjustment and memory and also um, massage so which one is the best i found all of the, those three to be pretty good and let's see now let's let's get over here but when it comes to interior okay they chose a more minimalistic design compared to many other cars they have. I don't know too much about Volkswagen. I just know Eagle, but I remember Eagle also had lots of buttons. This one, they tried to take away more of the buttons, put more of that in the infotainment system, um, which I think is good because then you have room for improving it via software update, but they better update it then because to me, uh, the, the infotainment in the ID3 is one of the weakest points. But on the other hand, that I've tested many, many EVs with not so good infotainment. And fortunately, humans, we get used to it. Uh, we get to know where, where you do stuff. Like, okay, I'm gonna park now so I can show you guys. I think the, the ride is over now. Uh, let me see. Just, uh, I guess I'll park the same place. I found. What is it, if it's available? No, it's not available anymore. Shit. Okay. And also, I like this, this here, this, this, type of a gear lever because you don't need to have a big ass stick like mm, 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 big and black no you this one is nice and it's close to the steering wheel and then you have the backup camera if you go for the base model you don't get the backup camera so <laughs> i don't like the base model i mean this is the first edition so eventually you will get more options when once the regular editions are out but nice backup camera i'm missing 360 camera though many cars nowadays they have 360 camera uh, even the honda e has it um but it's not not really a deal breaker to not have 360 camera because this one is working okay okay here we found the spot okay let me just oh shit, it's kind of tight I'll take it i'll take it i'll take it i find a hole i take it that's me okay let me see so and also another thing i should point out is that this car has good turning circle it's a rear wheel drive you know and when you think about this what, how uh, is this too tight for the... Okay, let me, let me go forward a little bit. It has great turning circle because it's rear wheel drive. If you have front wheel drive, something... I'm not a mechanic, but something to do with limitation because you have the drivetrain is in the front wheel where you turn. But when you have rear wheel drive, like the Honda E and the i3 and this one, you have good turning circle. And that is great for city maneuvering or just like now you want to maneuver into a parking spot, then it's great. Let me just park here. Here, so again, like I mentioned, the gear selector is great. You you have it close to the steering wheel. And once you get used to this, this type of gear selector, there is no going back to the gear selector that is down here somewhere. You know, 
And also another thing, let me show you here. What I like is that you, you finish parking, you unbuckle, you exit the car. Actually, you can also turn on the air conditioning if you want. Wait. Uh, there, okay. Now you turn on air conditioning. It's like keep climate on in Tesla or auxiliary heater in, uh, in uh, Audi. Uh, and also there's also stationary air con here. You guys can see it, but I'm just referring, telling you guys what I see here. So there's some kind of pre-heating schedule. You want to fire up this tomorrow morning. Okay, great. Turn it on and off, but I press the, the, the pencil button here and you see that it changes color, but nothing happens. You see, this is the problem I'm talking about, that the software here is, I feel like the software here is beta. Uh, and also, if you, another thing I'm, I'm a little bit confused about is that, okay, if you go, if you go, let's say, okay, climate, you see, now AC is on, right? If you switch off AC, you understand that when it's gray, it's off. When it's blue, it's on. But one confusing thing is that, is the climate on or off now? Well, we can hear it, so it's probably on. What is this power button? Okay, let's, let's power it on then. Is it, now it's off, but it, it's blue. So the whole logic here, it's bad logic, basically. It's, uh, now we're talking about usability. So this one is on. Uh, <laughs> and then this, the whole, this just goes on and on. So let me show you here. So now we have, here, is the, this is the trip status. And then in order to reset, there is no button here somewhere you can reset the trip. No, you have to go to vehicle, interior, cockpit, and then you can reset stuff here. And another problem is that when you go here to vehicle, you see, no, uh, vehicle, you see distance, but just in integers, five kilometers. But you go, if you go to status, you see the alarmer, and you click here, and you see there is another trip meter there that shows you fractions. What, what? it's just one, one decimal. Why couldn't they put it here? You see, plenty of space here. You know, the whole, like, who designed this? How could they let this software get into production without anyone, uh, not even a noob like me can point out that this is not good enough. And then the charging here, there's another uh, discussion. Charging screen is very confusing. It doesn't show you kilometers per hour. It shows you kilometers per minute if it's charging slow or kilometers per hour. It actually, no, it's not charging, not depending on charging speed, because if you're home charging, it will say uh, 20 kilometers per hour. But sometimes, actually, okay, if it charges really fast, like, like on a high power charger, it will then not show kilometers per hour, but show you kilometers per minute. And that is inconsistency. Uh, why can't it show kilometers per hour? People, okay, maybe uh, engineers found out that, uh, scheisse, we can't let uh, people see big numbers. We have to make it more complicated and s display kilometers per minute. Uh, no, I want to see kilometers per hour or uh, even better, kilowatt. It's not there. And also like here, there's a reduced charging current. Wait, is it reduced charging current? And reduced charging current, is that for AC or DC? I don't know, really. Can I reduce the charging current for DC charging? And is it on or off? I have to press it. Oh, now it's on, now it's reduced charging current. Okay, you see, it's hard to understand how it works, but I guess, you know, once you understand how it works, no problem. It's just that, it has a slightly steeper le learning curve, all this stuff. And another thing I don't like is that uh, not everything is uh, available here in the menu here. Uh, most, most stuff here, you can access it. If you go here, you come to climate settings, but you can also click on the climate setting here. It's like a hotkey, this one. Uh, mode though, is only available via the mode button. If you press in the brake pair here, then you get the mode select in here, a little bit laggy, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, but assist is also only available via the assist button where you can change uh, the assist system and If you uh, don't know about it like me in the beginning, I was looking everywhere in the menu I was looking at vehicle And then so you have some settings here in vehicle, but you also if you go Here you also have other settings here 
Yeah, so that's also a little bit confusing that you have some settings in the system settings and then you have some vehicle settings in the vehicle. Yeah, but okay, but all right, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of rambling there about the whole infotainment. Uh, hopefully they improve it, but let me point out the good things about this. There is a, there is a power, there's a, <laughs> it's this start engine button here, almost not visible, but that's good because you never need to use it because let me show you. We are parked. I'm going to exit the car. I lock it. Well, hang on, let me lock it. Okay, the car is locked. Mirrors full. Unlock the car. Enter the car. HVAC fires off if we switch it off. If we just buckle up, press the brake pedal put the car in gear, it will go. You see? Brilliant! Not many EVs are like this. Okay, Tesla is like this, Taycan is like this, um, Honda E is like this, but most other EVs, sorry if I forgot some of them, most other EVs require you to... S okay, let, let me park. Boom! Most other EVs requires you to start the engine. There is no engine here. Start the car and then stop the car. Why? Because it's, you know, it's fossil design. They design, they took that design from a fossil car because in the fossil car, you have to start the engine in, in order to do everything. Um, but in an EV, it's totally different. So Tesla knew about this already back in 2012 and they've been designing the cars like that. And, oh, okay, I forgot that Neo also works like that. Yeah, you just enter the car and the car is on. So that's a good thing about, uh, about the ID3. They, they starting to move towards that because with the e-golf, you had to also press start and stop. Um, as for other stuff, okay, as we also mentioned, the, okay, you can see it here. The steering wheel here to adjust uh, adaptive cruise control. It, it's, it's like a, it's like a touch, soft touch button. You can hear it. I'll go close here. But with haptic feedback, I'm not a fan of it because um, when I adjust speed, you wanna, if you press hard, you increase by 10. If you don't press too hard, you increase by one. But many times I press a little bit too hard and I increase by 10. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna go that fast. And then, yeah, so sometimes I just wanna increase my speed by five or something, and I, and I tap too fast, and then suddenly I increase my speed by 40. Like, oh. So the, the whole look, I mean, the, the feel, the use, usability with the, with the haptic feedback here is not my favorite. Uh, what else should I say? Um, the lights are amazing. Yeah, um, if you go for plus and max, you get, you get the, a matrix, LED matrix halide, they, they have a matrix that turns on and off, but they also turn in the curves. Amazing. I still feel like Polestar light is one notch better than this one, but this one is really good. Yeah. And all sound system is, uh, it's not wow for me. When I tried it in the base model and this one, and also the Max, even the Max has more speakers. I, I didn't feel like it was that crisp and clear uh, with good stereo separation uh, and also the bass was lacking a little bit uh, from what I remember so it's not the best sound system but um, overall though okay I think we have to end this it's getting kind of long now so but you guys want okay uh, uh, I like this one yeah I like this one also when you charge when you charge there's an icon there that pops up you can press it to preheat the car or keep the car heating up so I, I like that you know uh, compared to e-golf um, I feel like the ID3, I mean, it has more space. It has more EV features, like I mentioned, like the preheating feature that you didn't have in Golf. Like, like you don't have to press power on and off, you know? So I feel like the ID3 is a better EV. And also it, it drives and rides marvelously well. Um, okay, except for that, when it comes to acceleration, I, I feel like a Leaf is faster. I don't know, this one has 200 horsepower. Look, a Leaf has 215, but I feel like the car might be holding back a little bit. But yeah, there's so many stuff I could talk about. And also, yeah, rear wheel drive, rear wheel drive, 
makes perfect sense on EV because you don't need to have that engine in the front. You can have it in the back instead. And rear wheel drive, as long as I mean, EVs, they have good traction control and also good weight balancing. So you don't need to have a, a, a heavy engine in the front. I mean, the whole front wheel drive suits better for, for fossil cars because you need to put that big fat engine and alternator and radiator and gearbox somewhere and the natural place was to put it in the front so they did that and then you suddenly have weight in the front you know, maybe 40 60 weight reduction or something uh, and that makes sense to have the drive in the front instead and then you don't have to run the shaft in the back so for fossil car it makes perfect sense to have front wheel drive for evs my claim is that rear wheel drive is better yeah. <laughs> also, motors doesn't have to be that large anymore. You can have small 200 horsepower motor in the back, and then you have the benefit and the and the drive the fun to drive part. With you, know, you want to have steering in the front, and then power goes to the back. You know that's a driver's car. But like I mentioned, with the steering, uh, with the, with the turning circuit, you have all the benefits also of having a rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, of course. But uh, yeah, so that's a lot of stuff to, to mention. Um, but I should also talk about the interior because the interior in here is very plasticish. So that's something you have to live with, unfortunately. Um, it's not as nice interior as many, many other cars. Even the Korean cars have better interior. Even the e-golf has better interior. But so interior wise, this car, the ID3, even the Max is not that great, but what I find very important is efficiency on this car and charging speed and range is good. And also it has good EV properties. So overall though, I highly recommend this car despite not so nice interior. Because in, in, the, end, in the end of the day, what is important for you? Nice interior or nice range? I mean, if you have nice interior, like in the Eagle, I guess you can sit and stare and rub at the, the interior. Oh, this is nice panels while you are waiting for the, the 45 minute charging. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, I think I have to stop here because I could talk forever about the ID3. But to me, ID3 is really impressive car. And I don't know why it's not selling like hotcakes. Maybe it's because of Dieselgate, maybe because it hasn't regained people's trust. Or I think maybe because people haven't realized how kick-ass this car is once they realize it the id3 is going to sell like hotcakes but is it going to be a tesla killer no absolutely not tesla is in a completely different league but it will be a fossil killer and maybe other ev killers now actually no no, no it's not going to be any other ev killers because like i mentioned before so people are very brand loyal so if they want a german car yeah, they will still buy a German car, and this one is, what is it again? The Wunderbar. Yeah, this is good shit. I was about to say good scheisse, but that's contradicting. Yeah, so I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching, and talk to you later.